morning, I'm Daryl Jones, Director of Research at Hedgeye. Welcome to the Macro Show for January 27th, 2022. We have a lot of uh, new viewers today, so we welcome you. And uh, with that, I'll hand it off to Keith and we'll get right into it. Yeah, the all-access pass today, again, going back to my old days, you know, at home getting those HBO days where you could watch it for free because we couldn't afford HBO. But uh, again, trying to give you all the content so that you can see that there are many tools in the toolbox to play at the highest level. Uh, of course, for those of you that just joined us from the call, that's the research team where I take my 40-person research team and try to summarize what's actionable today uh, in terms of names and with the macro quads and overlays, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, top three things is what we start with on the macro show, then I'll get into some detail. So it's, um, guys, let's just go to that. Number one uh, is going to be the yield curve this morning. Number two is going to be stock market crashes, which are either in motion or already happening. Uh, and in, in this case, uh, that's a great opportunity for you, you to capitalize on with the futures higher. And then finally, uh, hit on gold, which is a big buying opportunity here. Uh, yield curve. Okay, this is what Powell did to the yield curve. All right, Powell took the yield curve to the lowest level. So again, for those of you that don't stare at the yield curve, you should. So again, that is taking the 10-year yield minus the two-year yield. It has gone down 12 basis points already this week. That's a lot, okay? And again, if the Fed wants to raise rates three, four, five times, I think that they're going to make that dead flat to invert it. So in other words, the Fed would be, a, you know, again, not only a catalyst for a stock market crash, but would be a catalyst for a very slow U.S. economy that is threatening on going on a recession. So again, you look at today's GDP number, a lot of people are like, actually, I even heard one guy say, uh, it would be on CNBC, of course, absolutely no one was calling for this kind of acceleration in GDP uh, in the fourth quarter. Well, that's total bullshit. I mean, on September the 23rd, we made the call when the Atlanta Fed went to 0% GDP growth that GDP was going to rip to the upside. And that's absolutely what happened. So again, now from the high point towards 2% and maybe lower the longer oil stays higher. Don't forget, on a real basis, GDP is reported, so you subtract sticky and high inflation. That's a point we're going to get questions on. You can have quad three factors with a quad four market. Got it? Quad three is when you have some stagflation, and in other words, inflation won't go down yet while it's peaking, and then you get quad four market. Quad four market is looking ahead to what? The quad we're going to be in. So again, quad four in Q2 is deepening as oil stays higher. Got that? Write it down, all right? That's point number one this morning. Hey there, Hedgeye Nation, or if you're not part of Hedgeye Nation, thanks for watching Hedgeye on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the button below there, subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also follow the link in the description to our website to get even more great investing content. Uh, and yes, a wonderful buying opportunity. As you know, for if, you've, if you're not watching this for free, you know that I was waiting and watching on buying things uh, like two-year notes, treasuries, again, across the curve, not just twos, uh, gold, you know, waiting for this uh, Fed mistake, and we're certainly getting a wonderful buying opportunity on that today. Now, don't buy things that are crashing. Okay, we got Wild Bill Ackman, who always blows up in quad four, uh, talking about you know, going big time on Netflix. Again, if it's crashing, if it A says bearish trend on your pin sheet, and B has a lower low in the range, and C is already crashing, don't be that guy, okay? Now, if you can hold it forever, whatever, but this is the macro show, this is pregame, okay? We're trying to play the game that's in front of us today. We're not day traders, we're risk managing, uh, risk managing our asset allocations and longer term positioning around the immediate term. What else, why else are you watching anything in the immediate term if that's not what you're doing? So again, crashes, we saw it again in South Korea last night, down three and a half percent. If you look at South Korea, obviously that's in quad four back to back. If you go to, uh, guys, show them slide 20, uh, some uh, free content for you there. If you go down the line, you can see back to back quad fours in Q1 and Q2 uh, are in Russia, its stock market has crashed. Again, down more than 20%. Uh, and uh, South Korea is now down 21% from where its cycle peaked. The Russell 2000, in short order, will be down 20% or more from its cycle peak. I think the NASDAQ's gonna crash too. It won't take long. So again, when you look at the futures, don't have an emotional reaction to that. It's not about the color coding or the cheering. It's about understanding where the puck's going next. We'll get into that with my boy, the mess. And how, he, he played pretty well with the Gretz. Uh, point number three this morning, gold. Buy it. Just, just buy it. You know, I don't know what else to tell you. How If you don't want to learn about quads or it's confusing or quad three to quad, buy it. Got it? Buy it now. Buy gold now. Why now? Because it's at the low end of the range, right? So for all of you on the show that are subscribers or whining and complaining, well, it won't go down. I don't get to buy it. Now you buy it, right? You, it, you don't always get the low end of the range, but when you do, 
you buy it. Okay, so again, that's what we're looking for here. Top end of the range, we'll see if the 10-year yield starts to come down, but we're certainly at the top end of the range on twos here, and that's why gold is getting upset for a day and a half. That shouldn't upset you. It's a buying opportunity. And for those of you that remember, at this time last year, I was saying sell it. Every time I told you to sell gold last year on the short side, it worked. We'll see how we do on the long, on the long side, and, and those are your top three things. The mess, love the mess. So Jonesy, this is a late birthday gift for you, by the way. <clears throat> Actually, my mom got it for me for Christmas. Oh, really? So, I, I'll, I'll take two, though. No, I'll, I'll give it to somebody else. Yeah. It's a great yeah. book. Um, you know, leadership matters at Hedgeye. So again, being transparent, accountable, and trustworthy people. You know, we don't want to be liars, cheaters, salespeople that are pushing a permanent product on the long side. It's, it's ridiculous, right? We're in an America now that's in the fourth turning. But what's never changed in America, no matter what your politics or your feelings about what I just said, is that this is the place where Canadian people like the mess and the mucker can succeed, right? It's a meritocracy. It's a meritocracy, right? This is what we want. We don't want to be, you know, mesmerized by people who want to become famous. We want to preserve and protect the capital that we work so hard for. We want to avoid drawdowns. And we want to absolutely capitalize on markets when they're going to crash, okay? It's good. It's good to be here. It's good to be part of Hedge Eye community and thank you. Again, thank you very much for joining us for those of you that have an open mind to do so. If you don't like me, I love you. All right, let's keep going. Keep going. So what do we do for the rest of the show? I show you what's in my notebook, okay? S&P 500, for those of you that, if your notebook doesn't look like this, you got to do a better job. All right? Every single day, you can go back 22 years, you're going to find that I wrote it down. Wrote down every single market price. And if you want to audit it, audit it. Be better. If you don't learn that way, then don't do it that way. But that's how I do it. It's called deliberate study. And when you study something deliberately, you can look at anybody who's done something exceptionally well over time. That's exactly what they do. They proactively prepare. They rinse and repeat. There's deliberate study. We're not just blowing one-liners here. We're recapping what the numbers are saying from the screens, OK? So it comes from the machines that we built to the notebook to the page. S&P 500 risk range. You got it. All right, 4,250. Why do I think the S&P 500 is going to ultimately be down more than 10%? Because that line puts it down more than 10%. And that's today's level, okay? So again, for, for people that have never risk managed a market crash, and by the way, you can audit this too. I'm the only one, only one, who uh, A, invented the quads, and number two, has never missed making a market crash call in quad four. The Fed tightening into a quad four makes it just easy, all right? So again, for, it doesn't have to happen today. Could happen by this afternoon or tomorrow, by the way. 4,250 on the S&P 500 is the number, okay? 4,574, that's a problem, right? So yeah, there's more upside than downside in terms of, there's two to one upside versus downside is one way to think about that, right? Because you have minus 2.3% on the downside and on the upside you have plus 5.2%. So just north of two, two to one upside versus downside. So that's one way to think about risk, but don't forget that from the low end of the range, markets always crash. So that's where people get sucked in like Bill did if he bought Netflix higher than where he's talking about it today. You think it's a good price because it's oversold. Markets crash from oversold conditions. Technicians oversold conditions, not mine. Okay? What you really should be paying attention to is the volatility of the range. If the volatility of the range is still in what we affectionately call the fuck bucket, north of 30 and rising and staying there because you're in quad four, lots of conditional probability in there, conditional factoring, if the VIX is greater than 30, this number is going to go lower as long as it keeps staying in the 30s. So the top end of the range is critical. The vol of vol, or the volatility of volatility uh, today on the VIX um, is, what, where are we at? Top end of the range is 36.88. That's what gives me this number here, okay? It's mathematically derived. It's not feelings. I know my style can um, you know, excite people, irritate people, whatever. Focus on the results. Focus on the results. Again, the fuck bucket of volatility is a very bad place to be captain stock picker. Okay? It's not about picking stocks. It's about picking the right portfolio. There's a big difference between running money for real when this environment goes into quad four, rate of change of both growth and inflation slowing at the same time. So the higher they get inflation in January and February, the more right we're going to be come June. Got that? So again, you can have sticky and high inflation, a quad three type characteristic, but don't be so intellectual about it. Be like Mucker. Go to where the puck's going. Ring, you know, Gretzky taught us how to do that. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal, 
phenomenal thing. You know, the market's pulling for that deep quad four in Q2. We'll go through that with some, with some pictures and some questions if you have them. Uh, look at the volatility of the Russell. I mean, that's, a, again, crash call, easy one there uh, with Russell volatility at 37. NASDAQ volatility is at 38. These are not buy signals. So don't be, again, viscerally impacted by the color of the futures or the commentary of people who have never run money commenting on them. Right? It, means, it means nothing. It's noise. It's called Brownian motion. At best, that would be a compliment. Uh, what else we got going on for you this morning? So if you look at the sector studies yesterday, there's a wonderful, you know, in as much as gold is a buy, short the financials here. They're up yesterday. Short anything that's up that's a short in quad four. Guys, go to slide eight. Look at quad four, what your setup should look like. Again, if it signals, this is just a starting point. This is being macro aware. Quad four, that's what you do. Okay, you got that? You got it, all right? Uh, but use the signal to time them right. Now, cross asset class volatility, what does that mean? Well, when you, when you aren't just like a stock chart monkey uh, and you look at the whole world of risk, you start to see some similar sets. When, when you start to see a breakout in high yield spreads, for example, alongside a breakout above 30 on the VIX, that's a real gnarly similar set if you're going into one quad four, never mind back to back quad fours with the Fed tightening. Okay, so that's a major risk signal. Again, uh, the, t the, the high yield OS spread uh, risk on faster signal is anywhere north of 330 basis points on high yield OAS. It continues to make higher lows and it's at 315 this morning. The move index is at 85. 91 is a trend for you know, the bond market to blow up. That could still happen. Yeah, it's not a setup we've seen uh, in the modern era. It doesn't mean it can't happen. Uh, but again, what I'd like to see is, is bond market volatility move down, or in other words, the move moves lower, and then we can get bigger in treasury bond positions, which we've appropriately risk managed the timing uh, on that. I'm definitely buying bonds today. Uh, what else we got going on uh, out there? Asia beyond South Korea was a disaster. Okay, the Japanese just got body bagged again. Uh, terrible place to have your money. Uh, these are bearish trends, uh, both China and Japan. Look at China. Uh, Japan was down 3.1%. Uh, if you're a real good chartist and you thought that that was a breakout on the 50-day moving monkey in December, oopsie. 50-day moving monkeys are what we call them, okay? China's still not coming out of the wrong quad. We've been short China since last year. Yes, I've taken it off the short side recently. Yes, I've debated getting long it, and no, I haven't, thankfully. Imagine you long Bitcoin in China. Oh my God, these are terrible decisions, right? Why? Not because eventually we, we can't get to quad two in China. It's because you don't have a signal to time it, right? You need the signaling process, the VASP, volatility adjusted signaling process built by the mucker. What else we got? Uh, breakdowns across Europe now. Switzerland's out. Okay, if you don't like it, too bad. Uh, I used to like it. I don't like it when the signal breaks. That's it. It's nothing against the Swiss. Uh, wonderful people. Uh, the, fact of the, the fact of the matter is that it broke trend uh, three days ago, actually, and it reiterated that this morning. Uh, short Russia on the bounce. We still have that, obviously, back-to-back -back quad fours, and you get a bear market bounce there. Uh, teetering on the CAC. The CAC is France. That's the only European exposure that I have in my PA currently. Uh, you can see that, obviously, if you're um, paired up with one of our asset management partners that like basically you know, copies or at least goes on the rules-based process that I'm articulating here. So what I'm saying should be in the, those types of portfolios, which is Switzerland out and France still in there. But again, uh, trend for the CAC 40, write it down, is 67.40. The DAX has officially broken trend uh, and stayed there. So that's also on your pin sheet. The way to read the pin sheet, the risk range sheet, which I included all, a whole bunch of stuff today. Uh, if it, the way to read it is if it's red, it's bad. If it's green, it's good. If it's red, it says bearish trend. If it's green, it's, it's obviously bullish trend. If it's, if, it's, if it's black or gray or whatever it is, that means it's neutral. It means it's teetering and waiting for some direction, like something like copper would be a good example of that. Uh, in, uh, in commodities, top end of the range for oil, but again, top end of the range for oil is, I'm, I have no position in oil. Uh, the way the signal works too, I hope everyone can appreciate. I, I, I mean, I've screwed up publicly uh, any, any way you can screw up, everything, right? For 14 years, I've timestamped every single move. Uh, earlier in the year, I was short oil. And then my trend signal was 74 bucks. It, above 74, I stopped myself out. That's a pretty good decision, right? Consider that, you know, bad decision to be shorted into that, good decision to not be wearing that, okay? So now at $88 oil, what are you doing, right? I have no position. I don't have to have a position in anything. I have a go anywhere strategy. And again, oil's at the top end of the range. The most important read through on that, and I'm much more interested in shorting natural gas here than oil, uh, because natural gas is bearish trend and it's nearing the top end of the range and it has an implied vol what? Power users, 
Show them the data. Look at this thing. This is like red zone. This is right there. Just show it. Come on, Jen. Ron, will you slow today? Pick it up. Implied vol data. Come on. What the fuck do you think I'm looking for? Come on. Come on. Put it on the board so I can write on it. These people that are watching this for the first time are like, I don't read numbers. I like narratives. Um, <laughs> I, 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 it's too much. It's too much. And tell me a story. Tell me a story, Gerbs, about huge things going on at Tesla, other than the bearish trend signal, by the way, at Tesla. Now i got to filibuster because you guys are off your game on a day like today. Come on. Pick it up. Put it on. Come on. Come on. Ah, this is so, so. See how... See how we are as a team? We, got, we can always get better, too. Uh, all right, here we go. So I got it. So this is called implied vol. I vol. Taught to anybody you've heard parrot it by me. Okay? So again, you got it right here. Uh, you look down here. There are a bunch of implied volatility premiums. That means that people are panicking, right? They're starting to buy puts and buy protection. Okay, well, that, that can be uh, a buy signal in a bull market like we had last year. Every time those would balloon to 40 50 100%, I would say buy the damn dips. Now I say sell the rips, okay? Now one of these things looks not like the other. You go to the natural gas, it's minus 25, right? Minus 25 versus minus two a month ago, that's how to read the data. So what you do with this is you look for A, the top end of the risk range, and B, a developing eyeball discount. You know, eyeball discount. In this case, we have minus 25%. So that is like doubling down when the dealer has a six in blackjack, and right? Uh, it doesn't work 100% of the time for those of you that are like, oh, you did the blue. Enough. This is a game about playing and weighing probabilities. So that, in, that is the highest probability bet you can make on the short side is when something is, a, again, below trend at the top end of the range with a, a diving implied vol discount. That means that people aren't buying puts. They're actually chasing the thing and, and or just you know, selling puts in, in some cases. Uh, one thing I was going to add, which is kind of interesting, you know, we're still experimenting with it, but uh, our deep learning model on natural gas, which is, you know, basically you put all of our, the key factors into machine learning, <coughs> saying the same thing. This, yeah. is, this is where you want to sell. Right? Isn't that amazing when you put all the things that just came out of my mouth into a machine, it says the same thing? Um, you know, that's the thing with me. I, I, I have, I've, it's taken me, God knows it's going to take me, it's taken 14 going on 15 years, probably takes another five to 10 if you're new at this. Uh, obviously, it might take me longer than that. But coaching you and, and getting you to level up to what's in my head and in my models, it could take some time. It's okay. The alternative is not having an easier thing to understand that doesn't work, okay? <laughs> That's not the answer. That's absolutely not the answer. So again, these are critical signals within the signal to be paying attention to, obviously. Um, and gold, for example. So if you look at gold, um, let's, let's do the same dance. Uh, it's got an implied vol premium. It's not huge. After today, it'll be bigger, um, which is why I'm going to say go bigger. If it goes lower than where it is today, go bigger. What is your top, what's your top size in, in gold? Mine's 10%. So I can go really big in gold, okay? I can also short gold because we go both ways and we like it. Sexy. Copper. There are divergences all over the place in commodities. So yeah, peak inflation, oil's going to drive it. It's the number one factor in the model. Uh, another peak inflation print. That's going to keep Powell poopy poopy in the Powell pants. He's going to keep trying to cover his tracks on what he had wrong. The only thing worse than not knowing that inflation could go to north of 7%, which we did, is thinking that it'll stay there for the rest of the year. Okay? Even people who don't do math think that. The Gallup poll, 80% of Americans think that inflation is going to be higher in six months. In six months, there is 100% probability that, that, that inflation is going to be falling. Falling to what? Okay, we have an answer for that. Put up slide 15. We don't have it falling to two when he says two. No, we now cast it daily, okay? So when you look at that, you can see that we have inflation going towards five, right? So I expect the long end of the curve bond yields to look like that. They'll peak in and around 1.9 if the, if the risk range is what it is today. Today, look at your pin sheet on the 10-year yield. It says 1.91%. That's where I think your downside is in terms of where your patience should be in accumulating long-term bonds, TLT, 20-year notes, stuff like that. Uh, so that's, that's how I want you to think about that. 30-year bonds are still saying that that is absolutely correct. Break-evens across you know, anything, five-year, 10-year, they're all saying what I'm saying. The only one who doesn't get it is Powell. 
He didn't get it the whole way up. How do you think he's going to get it on the way down? He's going to perpetuate the way down. <sighs> That's just a lot, you know, for these guys and gals at the Fed. They're going to be responsible for crashing not only the stock market, but everyone who's long crypto. Because crypto goes down in quad four, too. If you didn't know, now you know. Dollars? Are you long dollars? Awesome. That's a top asset allocation. It should be in quad four. At least it is for me today. And yes, I'll be selling some dollars today when everybody at Bloomberg showing you the chart that looks good. Um, so something to think about there. Bitcoin's risk range is on your sheet as well. Uh, shorting that, shorting that, shorting the equities that are linked to that. Is that shorting the Maestro, the Sailor, Hope.com stock. That's been awesome. Um, so again, uh, good spot to take some questions. Okay. Um, I'll go to this one first because I don't believe you hit on. <coughs> this yet. Uh, what about financials? This is Rodrigo from Madrid. What about financials? It seems the price is yet not reflecting the quad four economic look, outlook. Also the implied versus realized volatility is low, 33% 30, yesterday, I'm short. And uh, Steiner actually touched on this in the call where he's shifted, uh, I think particularly a bunch of credit card names to the short side. Moving some, you know, he's moving some of his names. In yeah, um, I did hit on it briefly, but uh, yeah, it is reflected. Both KRE and XLF are bearish trend signals. I don't have that on the sheet, but it's obviously on my screen. And yes, I said short the financials. So short the financials uh, on green on bounces when macro tourists are saying, "Oh, rate hikes, rates are going to go higher." On the first rate hike, from here maybe even, when the Fed raises rates, they're going to go down. This is exactly what happened in Q4 of 2018 when I made this call. I said it's going to be quad four in Q4 of 18, and if Powell, as a rookie, tightens into that, the stock market's going to collapse, and you're going to get falling interest rates and rising gold. I'm doing the same thing that I did back then. I only do think people call me short term. That's fine. I, I take it as quite, an, you know, when I tell Mark Yusko to go to fucking bed, that's an immediate term comment. <laughs> Like, are you kidding me, Mark? You're down 10.3% last year in one of the easiest markets to make money ever, and you're chirping me? You deserve that. You earned it, right? So again, we want to be clear on these things, and I want to be crystal clear like I was in Q4 of 2018. And actually, for the first two to three weeks, I was wrong, which happens. But longer term, nobody gets the intermediate to long-term cycle right better than I have. My team, fully loaded, and I. Nobody. Nobody gets these turns like we have. And I can say that safely because we've done enough cycles now that it's starting to add up. So again, if it frustrates you that you don't start perma-nailing it like people on Twitter immediately, check that at the door. That's your problem. When you get frustrated with people, it's generally your problem, not the person you're listening to, right? You have to be able to, and Messier walks through this. He says, one of the greatest lessons I learned in terms of empathizing with people, actually CJ Wilson said the same thing yesterday, uh, two-time uh, MLB all-star, struck out over 1,200 batters. Everyone who plays at the highest level says the same thing. You gotta learn how to empathize with the other person. Have some, have some ability in your mind to see where they're coming from. Yeah, I'm a little crazy, a little nuts. So are you, right? If you're using a 50-day moving monkey, you're absolutely out of your mind. It's okay, right? Okay, next question, Jim from New Jersey. KM, there's another big revert, and I, I noticed this as well, I went to bed, the futures were getting crushed. Wake up, not so much. Um, there's another big reversal overnight in the futures market. P -P PPT question mark and PPT for those of you who don't remember is the plunge protection team that whether there is one or not we think there is um, certainly saw it during yeah Trump's time but you you gave credence to the existence of PPT under under Trump do you give credence to to the to its existence under uh, Biden and Yellen thank you absolutely yeah. the plunge protection team is a bipartisan weapon of of, of Washington yeah. when when it's it's all about perception right. And that's what you're going to get sucked in today if you're buying, just like you got sucked in yesterday. Literally, when I tweeted, fade it, you can go back to that timestamp at 2.03 p.m. or whatever it was when people are like all you know, jacked up. Oh, I said that! Don't forget, we walked through it yesterday. Hedge funds already got long before that move. Now they're sellers. So if you want to be whipped around by what things look like in the overnight, that's absolutely not the way to do this. Have some wine at night, get a good night's sleep, watch the macro show, and I'll tell you what to do, or at least what I'm doing, with my own money, People are like, you don't run money. Maybe you'd like to see my PA. I'm not trying to big time anyway. There are plenty of monies in there. Okay, so again, I'm doing this with everything I got, i.e. all my capital, my entire fi family's net worth, all my friends and firm here, and you, right? We have the ultra skin in the game. 
So don't get whipped around by the channels of communication that you used to use. Futures are doing this, markets in turmoil. Don't do that. Precious life and cycle time with your family, the life side, cycle time is going to be wasted being whipped around by your emotions. It, it's noise, right? It's where the market prices close on a trade and trending basis that matter here. If I'm right on this, this is gonna be a three to six month potentially slog. If the Fed doesn't turn, it's gonna be six months. If they do, at down 15 to 20% S&P 500, could be three weeks. You know, we don't know, you don't know, but at least we have the humility to say that. Now, number one question here should be about monthly quads um, because I wrote about it. And if you don't know what a monthly quad is, um, you know, you could have a weekly quad. My comment today is a daily quad uh, about quad, quad three condition uh, for oil price. But guys, if you put up uh, slide 16, so this is, uh, this is the monthly quads. Again, we invented the quads, monthly quads. If you want to do daily quads, that's fine too. A lot of people that look at markets now are like, oh, it looks like a quad, quad two day or quad four day. Obviously yesterday, the last couple days, uh, well, really the, the, the last couple weeks have been quad four. Um, when you look at uh, monthly quads, so what I said was, what Powell's looking at right now in terms of being hawkish, fully loaded with this morning's GDP number and a seven handle on inflation, are the peak quad two numbers that on a monthly basis, so it's quad two in Q4, right? Q4 are these three months where all the data comes in and you fill in the page. So not even like with today's GDP number, we basically fill in you know, most of the remaining numbers. This is how mathematically rigorous this is. It's rules based. But the peak of quad two, the peak monthly quad was this month. Even if you don't read numbers, you can notice that by the color coding. It's like, a, it's like an Irish clover. You notice how that, how that worked? Even St. Patrick himself worked in threes. Don't cancel on me here. So some of these numbers started going red. Even though they're green, they're actually red in rate of change space. This retail sales number, for example, which is a ninth weighted feature in the model, is lower than this one right here. So it went from 18.24 to 16.95. What happened here, and then into December, we started seeing uh, jobless claims, which is the number three feature in the model. Ooh, hmm, what do you think the January, once we start to get to March, April, May, and you have to compare against these numbers, real consumption growth has to go from comparing against a down two in February to up 10 to up 25. Yeah. There is 100% chance. I only said this one other time in my career. It was last year, and I said it the opposite. I said there is a 100% chance that these numbers go higher than you've ever seen before. That was correct, quad two. It gave birth to bubbles that we'll never see, maybe ever again. Every time you get a bubble, they're different, right? That's the thing about bubbles. But they live in, and breathe in quad two. SPACs, story stocks, shitcoin, you know, you got it all there. It doesn't mean that they're not gonna, Bitcoin's not gonna be Bitcoin and the internet wasn't either, but plenty of internet stocks went to zero and the internet still lived, right? So it, there's 100% probability that the economy is slowing in the second quarter. So you're gonna go from the peak of quad two in November to slowing, not on inflation until we get to probably March or April, and the Fed's gonna be tightening into that with 100% probability that the key components of the economy, which are real PCE growth, real consumption is one, it's a number one rated feature in the model, and the labor market slowing at the same time. So there is a high and rising chance. Now that they have five Fed hikes priced in, I still think if they do one, the next one is going to be very risky to do and may not happen. If, if it's S&P down 15, I, that's the factor model that the Fed uses. Every single crony that they have is going to be calling them saying, dude, I got high yield spreads at 450 over, credit markets on fire, S&P is down 15, we're, we're losing, and they're mostly boomers, we're going to lose everything that makes us. <laughs> that's going to happen if I'm right. Right? So that's the real, I actually have not very, it's, as you can see, Jonesy, I only have, have this level of conviction once, which is last year on the other side of it. Yeah. So we're making the opposite call using the same model, and I want to make sure that people understand that the monthly quads are critical. So again, while it can be a narrower quad four in the first quarter, by the time we get to the third month, which is the March set of numbers, that monthly quad is going to be slowing. Okay? So that's important, because you don't have to like nail it to the quarterly. 
you got to nail it actually to the weekly and daily move that is reflecting and leading you, the signals leading you to the trending quads. Okay? Everybody got that? I hope so. All right, we're coming in on uh, 9.30. Just a reminder, we have real-time alerts live at 10.30, which is 30 minutes. All stocks, ETFs, we tell you how they're positioned. So hopefully you can join for that 10.30. Thanks a lot.